So David did a really nice job of laying out sort of the progress that's made, uh, that's been made in the in the vertical farming sector, um, control the CEA space more broadly. Um, I've been in ag for over 30 years now. Uh, the last produce end of the business. And I, I do say in produce, the movement toward controlled environment, the movement toward uh, local, toward, uh, you know, uh, uh, tr having traceability in your supply chain, you know, reducing your inputs, all of that has been been going for, for a number of years. And I think uh, vertical is just sort of the, the latest manifestation of a trend that's been that's been going for uh, for, for several years now. Uh, you know, it starts when you think about the controlled environment uh, ecosystem, everything from the early at the uh, kind of uh, kind of the, the lowest technology ladder, if you will, of net houses, you know, the screen houses to to greenhouse, to high tech glass, and then onto vertical. Um, so there's definitely advantages to that uh, from how you, uh, you know, how you grow your crop, the ability to deliver high quality produce year round. Um, that's been the driver toward toward CEA uh, and in, in all its forms. Um, so for for us, what we've looked at, uh, as Javid really would pointed out, there's been a lot of advances, a lot of technology has has flowed into this, especially in the high tech glass and, and glass houses, greenhouses, and then onto complete controlled environment. But the vast majority of those resources have really been focused on the infrastructure, on the buildings, on how you actually build the, the farms, how you actually work toward uh, uh, having uh, the kind of production system in place that can you know, compete effectively uh, at the consumer level from a quality perspective, but also from a cost of goods perspective, delivering produce. Um, so where we fit in and unfold is the gap that, we've foresaw, that we saw in the space Something that Javid also pointed out, and that's around genetics. It's really around, uh, you know, how do you provide the kind of, of genetic solutions that will be amenable to the production system in which they're being ground? Um, and I think one of the disconnects for me when I look at vertical farming, I've been going to these you know, indoor ag conferences and vertical farm conferences, um, is incredible technology, incredible level of investment. And yet, for many of the growers, they're basically buying seed from wherever that was really developed for other purposes. I know when I, so previous to, to heading up Unfold, I'm president and CEO of Unfold, I headed R&D for, for bear vegetables, bear vegetable crops, uh, you know, part of bear crop science. Um, huge organization, obviously. And, and of course we were developing seed for everything from open field to greenhouse to glasshouse, et cetera. And we were trying to provide seed for the market uh, vertical. But that seed wasn't developed for that. It was really, if you think about leafies, it's probably developed for Salinas Valley or the deserts of Arizona, or perhaps uh, you know for some of the great production systems in Europe or Asia, et cetera. And then it was here, try it. You would never walk into a high-tech greenhouse or glass house and say, oh, this is just some seed we have here, try it in your environment. Those seeds are developed purposely for that environment in which they're, they're, they're meant to be produced. Um, and so I think vertical is just kind of catching up. And so the genetics play for us is really critical. So we had the great fortune of, uh, of being, we found it about eight months ago, um, very nice investments uh, from Leaps by Bear and to Masic. Uh, but I think in addition to the financial support given, um, given to launch this company, we also have uh, an exclusive license to, uh, to the Bear germplasm for vertical farming. So we have the ability now to really tap into, I mean, I'm biased, I used to be at Bear, I had an R&D there. It's a world-class germplasm resource, but the ability now to hone that resource, to breed and select for varieties specifically honed to be as productive and as high quality produce for vertical farming, that's what we're about. The other part of our business is really the digital solutions to accompany that seed. Because when you get into high tech glass house, when you get into a, a true vertical or, or a complete controlled environment, environment, as Javid Wells knows, you know, that they, they are very data intensive. They're incredibly, uh, um, you know, high tech from the perspective, trying to understand what parameters actually impact the growth of that crop and the quality of that crop. So we'll also be providing, we think the, 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 the data side or the digital piece of the solution, that is how do you optimize for the growth of the genetics that we're providing? So that's basically unfold. Uh, we've been on the, we've been launched about eight months ago. Uh, we're building our farm here in Davis, California. Um, we're having lots of great conversations with a number of companies uh, to look, who are looking for genetic solutions. But we're excited about 
being able to be a solution provider for partnering with individuals, uh, companies, and 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 great uh, all the great uh, players within the VF ecosystem. But we do think uh, we're going to provide a unique solution because we're going to be 100% focused on vertical. Uh, but we have the resources to tap in uh, to the great germplasm from from bear crop science. But now we, as an individual, as a separate company, will be actually driving and and honing those genetics to really optimize it for the vertical farming sector. So Phil, I'll stop there and I'm happy to answer questions and looking forward to the conversation.